Hello, Yakri here with another Dominions 5 video. This time I'm going to go over Thaumaturgy levels 7 through 9 and just cover all the spells and talk about their uh, advantages or, or uses and whether or not they're powerful in general. Uh, general disclaimers, of course, that things in Dominions tend to be really niche, even if they aren't generally good. Um, so even for spells I'm disparaging, you can probably find some kind of valuable use for them. Although there are exceptions where no one's been able to come up with a good use for them, probably because they're bad. <laughs> All right, so let's start with Purgatory. So this spell is niche, but good. Uh, it, it, it kills, it doesn't kill a ton of undead, but it just slowly wears down undead armies. And... Especially if they're attacking into you. So it's kind of a deterrent spell when there's an undead nation in the game. I think that, that pretty much covers it. Um, Dark Skies. This spell is brutal. Um, absolutely brutal. Uh, it, it lowers enemy, enemy morale by a huge amount. There's already a penalty for being in enemy dominion. And then this gives you a scaling penalty the higher your dominion is in an area. If you ha if you plan to cast this spell, I do recommend avoiding a low dominion strength build. You want like you want to start the game with at least strength five, preferably strength six dominion, and you want to intentionally try and build out at least ten temples so you can boost up your dominion strength to closer to eight, right? And at that point, if someone attacks into your territory and you go and fight them, their army is going to rout with almost no provocation at all. Um, I highly recommend combining this with uh, casting a couple fear spells or something uh, and fast troops so that you can attack the enemy army while it's routing more easily. This spell is extremely good, um, and if you have to fight someone who has cast this spell, I highly recommend you find a way to dispel it. Um, because fighting into it is going to suck. And, uh, yeah, that, that pretty much sums that one up. Vengeful Water. This is kind of good. Um, I think it got nerfed, like, way back in Dominions 4 a while ago. A long time ago. But, um, TLDR is it, is it sends water elementals automatically in your Dominion to kill any enemy commanders that are in your Dominion. Uh, water elementals are very good assassins. And so, uh, it's, uh, it's a really nasty spell to have to deal with. If you have to attack into someone who has this spell, it's a defensive spell up, uh, you're going to need to kit out your, you're going to need to give your commanders bodyguards and you're going to need to, um, give them some equipment or something to make sure they're going to survive. Now, uh, with the chain, oh, in, in Dominion 5, it, the, the whole bodyguard thing works a lot better, um, is a lot more reliable, so... Uh, this is probably not as good, but you do need to make sure you actually have like decent bodyguards on your commander uh, before trying to attack into someone who has this. Um, also, if you are thinking of casting this spell, it, keep in mind it's going to be very effective versus like human nations, nations that have relatively weak commanders and non-elite troops that they might use hordes of or something. Uh, it's not going to be very useful versus giants, you, uh, nations that have thugs that can, thugs that can also command units. Um, and nations where they can easily have like elite bodyguard units on their commanders. <sighs> Overall, also I would say Vengeful Water is probably not too good now. Probably not. Not 100% sure, but I think it's probably weak at the moment. Um, all right, Vortex of Returning. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen anyone use this before, but theoretically you could do something like bring a lot of units with you to a battle and then just you know on like turn five of your spellcasting script swoop suck them all back to your home province um it's risky you can lose an entire army doing this in the astral void but uh hey you know what's the strategy i would i would use this for i've never seen anyone do it or even like theory crafted a use for it before um Oh, all right, all right. Here's here's what I would use this. Hypothetically, suppose you have some mages that have the magical pathing to cast some sort of battlefield destruction spell. Okay, but they don't have a way to escape, and you only have like one of each of the mages of like two different mages that you want to do this with. So what you do is you take some other asshole. <laughs> um, 
I wonder if it I wonder if it hits everyone in the battlefield. I think it hits all allies in the battlefield, not just your units under your control. Assuming that's true, so basically you have like two Earth Mages come with the guy who's gonna cast Vortex of Returning, and the Earth Mages cast uh, cast like Earthquake a couple times. Maybe the Astral Mage, you've got like maybe he's actually not just only Astral Four, he's like Astral Six or something, he's your pretender. And you uh do some other shit, like drop uh drop a nice like I don't remember the name of it. There's some astral spell that like deals damage over time to the whole battlefield. You just slap that down, and then a couple turns later, you cast Vortex of Returning. All your mages are sucked back to their home province, hopefully after you've like decimated the enemy army. Okay. Divine Name. This is the same as... Yes, this is the same as Gift of Reason, but it's uh, Arcane. It's pretty good. Like, what else? There's niche, niche strategies with it that are quite good. Not much else to say there. Hmm. Magic Plague. Actually. All right. You know what? I have to. I have to kind of like leave this one out because I don't know how good it is at all. I think it kills during the battle, and hypothetically, it ought to be quite good. I think. Um, versus armies that don't have excessively high magic resistance and aren't undead or non-living. But, mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I've never, never, I really need to dig into the theory crafting behind how it works and test it, uh, extensively. And actually, that's, that's one I haven't really messed with before. Okay, so charm spells. Okay, so this is the charm, not animals. Uh, same thing. Same same stuff applies to this as to the charm animal spell, except that it can target uh, regular troops, not just animals. Hydrophobia, even friends. This is pretty good. Yeah, this is like that confusion spell, but it hits a pretty good AOE. Um, again, not going to be great. It's it's fire magic, which is interesting. It's not going to be great versus um. Not gonna be great versus elite units, right? But it can be very disruptive to enemy troop lines if you're targeting like either a nation that's weak to magic, like monkey nations or Ulm, or nations that um, use a lot of chaff units, right? And you can kind of like break things up with this. Because area of effect five is pretty okay. Fatigue cost and a gem cost is a bit high. Um, but it only requires a fire two mage. So if you have a fire three mage and maybe a few a lot of spare fire gems, it's not too bad to cast. Although I'm not sure why I would go up to level eight thaumaturgy if I was a fire nation. Hmm, not much reason to do it, but hey, it could happen, right? Uh, maybe you don't have anything else to research. Hey, okay. Um, this is one of the magical enchantments that gives you gems per turn. They are all very good, provided you can keep them going for around 10 turns. Um, 20 air jumps for each turn, that's, un that's actually particularly good, uh, I'd say like 6 turns before this really pays off. You probably want to spend more than the base 80 air gems on it, and I highly recommend that if you intend to cast it, right, if it's part of your uh, strategy to win by in a, a fairly late game game, you have, a, you have a high level air mage baseline, right? Like... You could get away with it without that, especially if there are no astral nations in the game, because dispel is an astral spell, and it's the best way to remove enchantments. But uh, if you have like a astral eight, or sorry, air eight pretender, uh, casting Gale Gate will be much easier, as you get those bonus gems per additional, or like into that go into the spell for resisting dispel per point of magic pathing. I think it's five gems. It's either five or ten gems per point. I forget which. Okay, so lure of the deep. I think is not very good. That's an enchantment. Yeah. Mm. It's only... It only happens in coastal pro and sea provinces with friendly dominion. See, that's that's kind of the problem. It's got to have friendly dominion, got to be coastal or sea, and then it's a chance to uh, lure units into the water and kill them, right? Uh, it's relatively ineffective to the best of my knowledge. So, not a huge fan of it. Um, this is a... Oh, yeah, this one's nice. Everyone takes, like, psychic damage as their souls are drained, and the caster is healed. So, interestingly, this is, like, a good thug spell, right? Soul drain? Because the caster is reinvigorated. This means it heals them and uh, reduces their fatigue. 
So if you ha want to create like a super combatant pretender, this could be an option. You have to get to level 8 research, but uh, Astral 5, Death 5. You could also cast Soul Vortex. Ooh, that would be, uh, let's, call it, let's go with Spicy. That would be Spicy. You're going to have a hard fucking time killing that person as long as they've got a high base HP pool as well. Okay, so Fijian Pass. This is like Gate, I think. You can teleport somewhere, right, with an army. Um, but it's more dangerous than teleport. Yeah, typically like some amount of your units will get fucked up if you use this spell. But it's death magic, and if you don't have access to an astral way to jump your army around, this could be pretty good. You can also move 10 provinces range-wise, which is just crazy high. Um, mm. Okay, so this is one of the best, or one of the better, I think Volcano is like way better, but um, this is one of the better... Uh, pop kill spells. Same rule. Same thing goes for all other pop kill spells, except that this one is particularly effective because it's very high research and high magic path requirement. Uh, worm that walks. So these are the worm that walks is a I think like nature death mage that um yeah and uh, it has a chance to respawn during the battle it's fighting in. So if it's fighting in a battle and gets killed, it has a chance to respawn in that battle and uh, continue fighting. Um, let, me, let me double check this really quick because I'm pretty sure that's accurate, right? Um, Dawn 5, Inspector, but I don't know if it's, it's, since it has a form of limited immortality, I wonder if it's been changed in Dominions 5. So I'll, I'll double check on that. But overall, I mean, it's a 30 nature gems, and this is actually a pretty good uh, summon, right? Because it's a mage commander, and it's not a regular human chassis. It's, like, quite tough. Call the worm that walks. Yes, yeah, so it is... A worm mage. It's got regeneration. It has reinvigoration two and vulnerability fifteen. Blind fighter, better than I thought. It's got unsurroundable now. Swarm body forty. I think that's its chance to respawn if you kill it. It only has ten hit points, but it is tougher than a normal mage. Oh, and it's immortal. Okay, so I don't remember if it was immortal properly before, but it sure, certainly is now, and also has recuperation. So this is actually and it's nature three with a chance of death, earth, or nature magic. Definitely like really up there in terms of like commander summoning spells for to get more mage commanders. Uh, crazy good, highly recommend it. Okay, beast mastery. All animals are on the battlefield are bound to the will of the caster. So the crazy thing about this is like, it's only nature six and four nature gems. Now you might say, well, nature six is quite high. Yeah, but we're gonna talk about master and slave in a second, that's astral eight. And this is why being a animal fucking sucks, right? Animals have a lower than usual magic resistance in general, and you can be targeted by special spells like this. Um, this will just fuck up nations that have animal armies in the late game. This is just cra a crazy good counter. And nature six is relatively easy to get, at least as far as like high magic path go right um so yeah that'll just wreck a nation that has uh like that, that's like actually a, like a monkey nation or something right so this is like shit how is this different from the astral gate spell fuck i'm confused now a little bit right because uh allows you to move with all that's, that's another astral spell that was a little bit lower down that does Almost exactly the same thing, right? <laughs> Did I miss something here? Gateway. A distant laboratory. Oh, fuck. Okay, so in my previous video, I mentioned this for teleporting armies, useful places. So this this can only teleport you. I didn't like I like my eyes glazed over when I was doing this. This can only teleport you to a friendly area. So okay, that's that's much less useful. You can still do some cool stuff with that. However, uh, it's not the same as Astral Travel, which lets you step through and attack someplace, which is, you know, considerably better for obvious reasons. Um, Alright, Master and Slave. So this is great. Now here's the thing. This targets the entire battlefield. Alright, now, you might say, well, it's only magic resistance negates easily. A lot of, although a lot of units are going to be affected, most of them will pass their save and not become enslaved. 
Well, yeah, that's totally true. However, since every single troop on the enemy side makes has to make a check to not become enslaved, suppose there are like 500 enemy troops on the other side. By the time you get this spell, that's a totally reasonable number to have in a battle. Well, that's 500 chances that you enslave a unit. There's a good chance you'll maybe get like uh, a percentage according to how easy it is to make the check. So if they have a 20% chance of failure, you're probably going to get 20% of the units, right? Which, you know, 20% of 500, not bad. That's uh, one fifth of their army, um, so it's it's a pretty good spell. And potentially, if you have, if you, you, what you might do with this is you would have um, the person casting it be a communion leader, and you just queue it up two times or three times. Uh, three times is pretty much going to max you out on astral pearls, but uh, you can do it with a big communion. Like you have like eight communion slaves, and you're an ad. Especially if your your caster is uh, already like astral six or something, or astral seven or eight, because then the the fatigue cost would drop down to like four hundred or two hundred or a hundred in the communion. Um, and you actually, I think I might have a hard time getting it under two hundred, but. Uh, that's neither here nor there. This is a really, really powerful spell. It's the kind of spell you you research in order to just win games eventually, right? This is like this is what, one of the things you can use to close out a game because it's really hard to deal with. Because even with high magic resist, some troops are going to get enslaved by it, and those troops are going to be peppered throughout the enemy army, and their army is going to turn on itself, and so they're going to start fighting themselves while your army is like chewing through their front lines the whole time, right? And this this is just like one big ass mage and a bunch of communion slaves can do this while what, are, what, the, what you have you should have like a lot more mages that are also doing useful things um and there's a chance that the enemy might even lose a major two to this if they're really unlucky so and this is master and slave but for undead um it's actually a little underwhelming compared to the uh the beast mastery one right beast mastery is a whole level lower and it only takes nature six. This takes death seven, and it's in the same tier as master and slave. And master and slave, uh, does it affect undead? It doesn't affect mindless beings, so it doesn't affect someone dead. So you might need to have uh, undead mastery for certain situations. So I guess it's not too bad. Okay, so that pretty much covers thaumaturgy. Uh, thaumaturgy is really, really big on uh, like nature, death, and astral magic. Uh, it's a pretty crucial school for astral, especially up to soul slay. Um, for other for other um, magic paths, it's a little more utility, but uh, yeah, uh, it's it's pretty good. It, and um, I think that pretty much covers that. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, uh, drop them in the drop them in the uh, comments down below. And uh, eventually, I will I may make a follow up video if there are like uh, if if people have questions or concerns or like comments about some horrible mistake I made that are like worth making a whole video over rather than just replying to a comment. All right, thank you all for watching. Yakri out.